Hello everyone and welcome to Makeover Monday week 20 Watch Me Viz. This week we're looking at a survey of Americans trying to decide which animals they could beat in a fight unarmed. So let's start by looking at the article, or sorry, the visualization itself. So pretty straightforward. It's actually really good. Um, so it's it's just a simple barbell chart showing the difference between men and women, men in, in purple, women in green. I do like how they've called out in particular the, uh, the, the way that they've labeled the colors. So let's see if I can turn on my, uh, oh, that didn't work, okay. Um, so yeah, I like how they've uh, labeled the bars. You know, everything looks actually really good in this. Um, I, I don't think I'd really change a whole lot. I like how there's. Um, uh, I, I might get rid of the horizontal reference lines. I don't think those are really all that necessary. And do we really need the axis at the bottom if we have um, the the marks all labeled? So so maybe get rid of the grid lines would would clean it up a bit or maybe have the grid lines at 0, 25, 50, 75, something like that. Um, let's see, so the title itself, so compared to women, men feel most able to take on medium-sized dogs and geese. So uh, let's see, so, but I'm not quite sure uh, compared to women, I'm not quite sure why that one is listed, uh, like that, that second part of the title Men feel most able to take on medium-sized dogs and geese. Well, men actually feel most uh, able to take on rats and house cats. So I'm not quite sure what that what that means there. Um, oh, okay. So they're saying most like so it must be the length of this bar. So the biggest difference between the men and the women. So that would be medium-sized dogs and and geese, or and a goose. Okay. So really interesting. It's a really funny article if you um, uh, if if you read through it. Uh, yeah, there's real interesting things here. So 6% of Americans think they could beat a grizzly bear in a fight. Um, but uh, yeah, they're all crazy. I don't know if you'd be able to kill any of these unarmed. Like, first off, how would you catch a rat? Um, if you try to fight a house cat, it's probably going to bite you to death. Um, things like that. Um, yeah, I don't know how anybody thinks they could beat a grizzly bear in a fight and a lion and stuff, but I'd love to see somebody punch an elephant. That would be just amazing to see how terribly that goes. So um, the data itself is, um, let's see, so we've got the name of the animal. This uh, The total column is basically the, the combined male and female. These are all weighted based on the number of people that took the survey. And they're just three simple columns. So let's go to the sheet. And uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set all three of these to uh, percentages. So I'm going to right click on them and choose default properties and then number format. And I'm going to send it to percentage to zero decimals and hit OK. So yeah, um, and hello everyone that's on the call. Thank you for the kind words. And what I'm going to do, so if I just start by kind of rebuilding the original, um, so we've got the animals, we have the females, and then we have the males. So I'm going to combine, create a combined access view and change them to circles and maybe put measure names on, on uh, color. So from here, the easy thing to do, I'm going to actually find their exact colors. So because this is actually, you'll see, notice when I select this, it's not an image. So what I should be able to do is I should be able to inspect it. Let's see what happens here. Um, maybe not. Inspect. Okay, there we go. And then when you're, when you're inspecting something, you can um, click on it and hopefully uh, find the color. So I don't know what's going on here. Uh, so let me try it again. So I'm going to click on that there. And we should see the color. Where's the color? So that's gray. Um, let's see here. I should be able to see the colors somewhere. So there we go. So label right. All right. So, okay. So they give you the RGB code. So 137. Here we go. So 137, 123, 211. So that's going to be the men. So the men. I'm going to go to my, uh, let's see, so I want to change this to, well, what do I want to change this to? Um, RGB sliders. Oh, yeah, I just typed the numbers in here. So 137, 
123 and 211. Whoa, 137, 123, 211. So that's going to be the male color. And then the female color, that'd be this here. And let me go down here. So it's 91. So 91, 171, and 171. So now I can at least match the colors of the original visualization. Um, okay, and then I'm going to calculate the difference between the two. So I'll just call it the variance. And it's going to be just my um, uh, male minus female. And that's going to be my sorted field. Uh, or no, actually, I want to sort this by, uh, it looks like it's sorted by the male number. So I'm going to sort by the field uh, ascending by male. OK, so now we've got a similar view there. <clears throat> um, not quite sure why I created that variance calculation. It must have been in my head for something. And then I want to go ahead and create this barbell. So let me see if I can find the, how can I click on the barbell? Let me try again here, there we go. So let's see, so what is my color here? 204, 204, 204. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to uh, duplicate my measure values. And on this shelf, I'm gonna change it to a line and I'm gonna put measure names on path. And that gives me those two side by side. And let's see, what did I say it was? Uh, 204. So that line is going to be 204, 204, 204. So all C's, that makes it easier. And I'm going to make that a dual axis and synchronize. And then I'm going to move the circles to the front. And there we go. So we've got something very similar to the original. Um, I need to go ahead and uh, hide the headers. So. Okay, so we'll get rid of those, get rid of the field labels. Um, I can get rid of that now. And it looks like on the circles there, they've got the mark labels showing. Um, but we want to, uh, let's see, we don't want to allow overlap. Um, so I wanted to match the mark color, maybe eight point. I wonder what font they're using. Maybe it's something else I should have looked up. Looks like it's, uh, what font is it? I'm trying to think of the name. It starts with an R. Uh, okay, so let me try this again. So railway, oh, I was close. So the font then, actually, I, what I could do is I could just change the workbook font to uh, railway. Come on. Well, that didn't work very well. So railway, okay. And I think I have a, a different railway that's not quite as, um, yeah, I think I like this one better. Okay, and you see that the font now matches the color, but what I want to do, um, okay. So I think because I want the males on the right and the females on the left, you see, it's kind of hard. I could like manually drag these one at a time, but that's kind of like a real pain to do that. Um, so I don't want to do that. So the way I would get around that then is <clears throat> I'm just going to put male on the label. Um, and let's see. So the, um, let's see. So I do the min max by the field, um, some male, and let's do it for each, come on, each cell. Yeah, so that's not, that's not going to work. Okay, so I think I'm gonna have to probably do this kind of the hard way. Um, okay, so that didn't work. So let me just turn the labels on again. Yeah, so what I would, going to have to end up doing here is just manually moving these, which I didn't want to do, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, unfortunately, I can't like, um, I can't do them separately, so it's kind of a pain. But anyway, I could finish that another time. Um, 
but to get the the kind of labels, uh, the men and oops, let me get rid of that. To get the the words men and women at the top, I think the best way to do that because I don't really have space here, so I'm going to um, put on my grand total, and I'm going to move my grand total to the top, and then I'm going to uh, let's see when I click on it, you'll see automatic here. So I'm going to oh no wait I want to do uh, I think I want to do oops. want to do hide and then and hide. Okay, so that'll make my chart join back in here. It messed up, see how it messed up all my marks again. But now what I could do is I because I have that space, I can now annotate that mark and I could call that um, female and I could get that to match my mark color. Oh, this is annoying. Just do it this way. Okay, and maybe I'll make it unbold. No, I don't see how I can make it unbold. Okay, and then I could just move this maybe above that mark um, and then format. And I'm going to get rid of the line. And get rid of the shading. So, oh no, I don't want to get rid of the line because they had the line. So I want to keep the line on, but you can't see it. So let me see if I can make the grand total bigger. There we go. So now we can see the line. Uh, but then, yes, yeah, so the shading's not there. So you can see how I can gradually build this. Um, but let's not do that. So let's uh, let's remove the grand totals. So um, yeah, I always forget how to remove the grand totals. So analysis totals show grand totals. Okay, and then I'm going to get rid of that. Right. So again, I would have to move all these over. This this becomes a real a real kind of pain. But let's I'll I'll going to turn the labels off now just so we can look at the chart a bit better. Um, and I want my circles to be a bit smaller. Oh, not quite that small. And then the lines need to be just a bit thicker. Okay. That looks pretty close. They look like they've got some transparency on their lines, so I'm going to maybe reduce the opacity a bit. Something like that. Okay, so now we're pretty close to what they created. So this is a barbell. Um, and let me duplicate that. And But what I could also do is I could also have the total on here. So my measure names right now is filtered to just the male, uh, female and male. So I'm going to include the total as well. Why the heck is female listed twice and males listed twice? Oh, not quite sure. So then we have the, the total as well. So that brings all three of them in. Um, so I'll call this barbell with total. Uh, another way I could show the total is um, if I just move the total to the all marks card. And then what I want to do is I'm going to add a reference line. Um, I want to do it for each, uh, is it for each pane? And I want this to be the total. And the line I want it to look like, uh, I liked that red that was in there before. I'll just pick something for now. Uh, no label, no tooltip. Well, maybe I could leave the tooltip because that has the total. And then does it need to be, there we go. We need to do it for each cell. So we get something like that, but the problem is now, these, um, you know, the the lines look pretty ugly. They're really they they kind of stick out a lot, which I which I don't like. So let's duplicate that again. So let's call this barbell with total reference line. So maybe another way we could do that is oh, let me undo. I'm going to duplicate this sheet again. Oops. Let's duplicate this again. And instead of having 
these on measure names on circle. I'm also going to, let's see, I'm going to change my mark type to a shape. And now I'm going to put the measure names onto the shape shelf. Okay, so what I want to do is I want the total to be maybe like a little a little mark or something. So I'm going to change my male and my female to both be circles. Okay, and hit apply. And that's kind of back to the way it was. And now we can kind of play around with different shapes for the total. So you could put maybe a diamond in there. Um, I think I have some other, so that's a diamond as well. Um, I think I have some other ones here. So maybe something like a thick line. Yes, there you go. So you get that you get that line. It's not very thick though, so I'm not sure how useful that would be. Um, I thought I had a thicker line there. Maybe I don't. Um, directional. There we go. Here's a nice fat line. All right. So then we get something like that for the total. So that's another. Uh, another way to do it. Uh, so barbell with total and shapes. All right. Um, so let's go back to this one and duplicate it again. And this time I'm going to make it like, I like to call it a peas in a pod. I don't know what else to call it. Um, but really we just want to enclose the circles with this gray line in the background. So on the line shelf, I'm going to just set the size to be bigger. Uh, there we go. So something like that. Maybe not quite that big. Um, maybe I'll make it a bit bigger. Make my circles ever so slightly bigger. And then maybe put a border on the circles. So that way they kind of, oh, that didn't really work very well. Maybe a dark border. Maybe not quite so dark. Um, so yeah, this isn't quite working out. Okay, maybe something like that. It's not great, but um, you know this this is you know another way to kind of represent this same data. So I'll call this peas in a pod. If anybody knows like the official name for that, that'd be I'm all ears. All right, so let's look at some other ways that we can visualize. Really, we're just trying to compare two measures, two or more measures to each other. So I like to use these different uh, kind of chart choosers. I'm going to actually start with the. Um, the visual vocabulary that I created and just see if there's any um, anything in particular that will be of use. Okay, sometime today. Okay, well maybe we won't use that one first then. Let's go to this chart chooser. Now I'll include links to all of these in in the uh, the description at the end. So the first thing is we know we've got categories, right? Male and, and female. And then we also have um, the, the different animals. So, okay. So we could do a bar chart, right? We've kind of done that, but we could also do a grouped bar chart. So to do a grouped bar chart, I'm gonna put the animal here. I'm gonna put the female as the bar. Again, drop the male onto the same axis. And uh, let's see, we probably, let's put measure names onto color and we get that same sort of view we were looking at before. So this would be our paired bar chart. Um, so let's sort. Let's sort by the field. Uh, let's say uh, male descending, something like that. So now this is sorting by the by the purple bars. If I was going to sort by the males, I would put the male as the first bar because then it's it's to me it's a bit more obvious that we're sorting by by the purple there. So that'd be a grouped bar chart. Okay, we could also do a diverging bar chart. So you see here we got one going to the left and one going to the right. And what I would do for this one is I'm going to just stick a minus sign in front of the female to make it go to the left. And I'm going to take my measure names off of the view. So now they're side by side with each other. This is sometimes called a butterfly chart as well. Um, now notice the formatting looks, looks uh, a bit strange here. Um, so what I would do is I'm going to put female onto the tooltip and male onto the tooltip. So now when I hover over any of the bars, I can always see the male and the female values. And I don't want to show 
the tooltip when it's this uh, minus sum of female. So I'm going to click on that and uncheck include in tooltip. And now, uh, <clears throat> well, that didn't work, did it? Oh, and I want to uncheck it on measure values as well. So now that, you know, it, it looks the same, the tooltips look the same everywhere you go. And so this would be our um, diverging bar chart. So now if I was going to format this, because you see these are negatives going to the left-hand side, I'm going to format this axis and I'm going to set the scale to be a percentage uh, to zero decimals. And notice how it's still negative on the left-hand side. So I'm going to go to custom now, and I'm going to do zero percent, and then colon zero percent. The or sorry, after the semicolon, you get the uh, to format the negative value. So now they're positive on both sides. And I would probably then also get rid of um, get rid of this title. Okay, there we go. And maybe make it fit entire view, hide the field labels, and there we go. So we've got something like that. Um, so that's not, that's not too bad. Um, another way to maybe make this look a bit better. So let me just, this is our diverging bar chart. And I'm gonna duplicate that. And instead of having the name to the left-hand side, I wanna put the name down the middle. So to do that, I'm just gonna put the average of zero. And this field, I'm gonna change. So this one, I wanna make, make sure that's bars. The average of zero, I wanna make text. And on that text, I'm going to have the animal. Okay, and I don't need measure names on the view. So now you can see we have the animals. And if I make this a dual axis and synchronize, and then, uh, so we want those in the front, so that's good. But now I can hide this header. And I can now hide the header for the animal. And there we go. So now I can see for, and then the average of zero, I need to get rid of the tooltip. And now, no matter where I hover, I can see the different animal and what those percentages are. Um, I want to see what happens if I put my labels on. And yeah, so it's this is where it really gets to be a pain because I can't put them on the outside. So what I think I'm going to have to do here is um, let's see. So if I put let's see. So let me just grab these. And I'm going to right click, mark label, always show. And then I want those labels to be out to the left. Okay, but see, this is annoying. Why doesn't it let me uh, put them out to the left? Okay, well, anyway. So what I could do probably is uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to save this as a field. And I'm going to call it uh, female minus. And then set the default number format for that to be 0%, 0%. Okay, so now what I could do is <clears throat> I'm going to, uh, I think what I'll do is I'll just put reference lines on here. I shouldn't really have to do this, but I, but I do. So for my measure values, um, I want to have that there. And then I want to have the sum of female. No, the sum of, oh, OK, that's fine. So I need to put, need to put female minus onto detail. And then let's edit this again. And I want to make this my female minus. I want to turn the label on. I'm going to have no line. No tooltip. Turn off the recalculate. OK. And then if I format the lines, I want my alignment to be left and center. And I want no shading. OK, there we go. So now I've got my labels out to the left hand side. Uh, and I want my color to be that greenish color. There we go. And then on these, uh, let's see. So if I, I should be able to, if I do mark label always show, 
Okay, see that does the same thing. So I would have to do another um, reference line. So reference line. Come on. So I want to do mail and label it with the value. Automatic is none. Turn off my recalculate. And then I want to format this. And my alignment will be right and center. Turn off my shading. And then my color needs to be uh, whatever this color is. OK, so now we've got that nice little view. And I could maybe make this text color maybe white. It might be a bit bright. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, something like that. Um, let me format the view. Get rid of my grid lines. Get rid of my zero line. Um, well, my zero line, actually, I wonder if I just put that through as a solid line. Yeah, I don't need that. And then I'm going to get rid of my column dividers and get rid of my row dividers. And then lastly, hide the header. So now I've got a nice cleaned up diverging bar chart. So that looks pretty good. Um, so that's that. That's my diverging bar chart, deviation, um, a floating bar chart. OK, so a floating bar chart is going to be similar to our barbell, but this time uh, let's see, what would be the easiest way to do this? So if I put animal on the rows and I put, uh, I need to have an axis. So let me put female here and male here. And if I make them a Gantt bar, uh, Gantt bar, let me put that onto detail, or let me put that onto color. And then I should be able to put a reference band on. No, I don't want to do a reference band because what I'm going to do is I'm going to color whichever one is higher. So let me do this. And then this is going to be a, um, this one's going to be female. And then the size I want to have is my variance. So that should make everything go to the right. Okay. And then I want the variance on color. But then the variance I'm just going to set to two colors, so that's fine. Uh, so two colors. The negative value is going to be our, uh, so that would mean women are less than men, so that's going to be the male. And then, oops, hit OK. And then the other direction is going to be the female. OK, so actually, we don't need this one. Um, and I think my colors are backwards, so I need to switch these around reversed. There we go. And if I sort this now, I think for this one, I would probably sort by the field, uh, maybe by the variance this time. And this shows you, you know, which ones are the largest variants. Uh, maybe that's not the best way to do it, but um, that is another way to kind of. So this would be a floating bar chart. Um, is it helpful, by the way, to kind of see this process to go through here? I, ho I hope so. That's the idea. I would put these onto the detail shelf. Now, one thing you could do here then is maybe I could put the total on here as well and make that, sorry, make that a dual axis and synchronize. But the total I'm going to have as a circle and get rid of that, get rid of the size. Let me put the total on here as well. And then on the total, I'm going to put measure of names on the color. Okay, maybe I need to choose a, a different color, but um, yes, now we can see the, the total in the view as well. Um, 
So maybe the total should be a different color. Let's maybe make the total, um, let's see. What would be another color that would go well with these two? Maybe this grayish color. Yeah, something like that works. Okay, so that looks okay. Yep. Yep, so then that gives us the total. I'd have to play around with the size, but at least that gives you kind of a, an idea on the male versus the female versus the total. Um, so, yeah, so I think that's okay. All right, so this would be our floating bar chart, and then I would probably hide the header for the top. Actually, you could probably just, maybe I'll, yeah, anyway, I'm probably not going to use this one, but this is our floating bar chart. What else can we do? We did that. We don't want to stack them. Um, I don't want to do, I did a dumbbell. I could try a scatter plot. Let's see what happens here with a scatter plot. So let's do female, male, and animal. And make those circles. Okay. And if I put my variance onto color, maybe what I should do is I'm going to set my default colors for the variance to be two steps force the center to zero, and then my negative number is going to be the greenish color. And my positive number will be the purplish color. So now anytime I use this field in the view, it's going to color code them one way or the other. Okay, so <clears throat> this is useful because now what I could do is I could duplicate the mail to this shelf and then if I put a reference, a um, trend line on here for the male, you'll see I get a perfect line through the, so let me show you what happens when I make this a dual axis. And then I'm gonna synchronize the axes. Okay, so you see men and women. Uh, so what happened here? So no, on this chart, this one, I need to get rid of the circles, okay. So, yeah, so here we've got mail at 51. So th this, the way that this line is now is this will show you a perfect, if men and women said the same thing, then that's what this line would represent. I don't know if that makes sense or not. Um, please make video on relationship versus, that has nothing to do with this, with this, uh, with this video. Um, and there's videos on Tableau's website for that, by the way. So uh, what I would do here is probably format this trend line to maybe be something like that. How's that look? Okay, so then I could hide this header. And what this is telling us now is, you know, the farther up it is to the upper left, the more men, um, uh, the, the greater degree uh, that men think they are, what's the way to... Uh, the more men than women think they can kill. I'm not sure if that makes sense or not. Uh, would be a way for me to. Um, so this would be men feel more able. So like this section, this annotate area. I say men, men feel more able. And that'd be purple. Maybe make that 20. So that would be kind of this section here. Um, and then maybe let's format that and get rid of the line, get rid of the shading. Okay, and then I can do the same thing, but down here, Yeah, but I'm just going to change the color and say women feel more able. Make that a bit wider. Okay, down so that's like somewhere like that. And again, format it. Okay, 
So that's the way that you could, I actually kind of like this one, so this is my scatter plot. I'd be curious to know which ones, um, which ones you like the best so far. So if you want to leave any comments, that would be, that'd be great. Yeah, I, I really like this one. Um, so that's my favorite so far. So I'm going to move that one all the way to the left because it's my favorite. Um, okay, what else? Um, uh, bullet graph. Okay. Um, not really bullet graph, but what this one would do. So let's do males on the columns sort. And then I'm going to put female on here and then put the female as a reference line. So for each cell, my reference line is going to be the female. Maybe I'll make it a, uh, a black line. And then I'm just going to color code the bars by the variance. So we could see which ones, um, you know, the, the male versus the female. So that would be kind of like a, um, it's not really a bullet graph, but it's a, um, because the, a bullet graph typically has the shading in the background as well, but I don't really like that shading. So I'm going to um, uh, just leave it like that. Um, okay, we could also just do a simple uh, variance bar chart. I probably should have done before. So animal variance, and we could sort that descending, and again put variance on color. And now we can see uh, which ones are the men and the women. Um, let's format this default properties number format. Um, okay. And there we go, so I could tell it to match the mark color. So this would be our variance chart. So this would be kind of like how much more likely are men to think they can beat up the animal than, than the women. Um, okay, scatter plot so far, okay. All right, uh, anything else in here? So probably nothing there. Um, Okay, so here's another website, the DataViz catalog. So I'm going to look at compare. Oh, actually, maybe I should go back here. Let me see, because I think there's another. We could probably look at maybe, let's see what's in relationships and hierarchy. Okay, so can't chart we've done. Scatter plot we've done. Okay, so nothing there. Okay. Um, okay, so comparisons, bar chart, bullet graph. I'm just seeing, trying to see if there's anything we haven't done yet. Um, span chart, stacked bar. Okay, so we've done all those. Okay, so we want to do comparisons. Some of these I just don't like. I wouldn't use as visualization, so I'm not going to. Um, not going to look at those. I mean, you could do maybe a donut inside of a donut. Uh, I don't even know what that would look like. I'm curious. Let's see if we can build that up. I, I know I'm not going to like it, but I'm curious to see what it would look like. So if I do, um, let's put, uh, if I make this a pie and I want to do uh, one minus male. Okay, and I want to put uh, I want to put male on the angle, and no, I want to put let's see, measure names on the angle. No, measure values on the angle, and I want it to be. Oops. And then put measure names on color. Okay, so there we go. So. Let's swap these around so it starts at the top. And maybe I'll make the one minus male gray. Okay. So then let's see. So let me make this the average of zero. And if I duplicate that, and let's make this one. Yeah, see, I'm not going to be able to do it with the way the data is structured. But if I want to make it a donut, I would just make this a circle and get rid of that, 
get rid of measure names, make the color white, and maybe I put the male value in the label, and then make it a dual axis, and synchronize, and then I'm going to make the pie a bit bigger, and now you have your, your donuts. Now I put the, the label in the middle. The problem now is we lose, we lose um, what the female value is. So um, yeah, I probably wouldn't do a donut here. Um, so radial bar chart. Mm, we've done the bar charts. Um, you could do a radar chart maybe. I don't think that would look particularly good either. Grouped bar chart, box plot. Um, what else here? Okay, I'm just trying to see if there's anything else that. Okay, so I call that one a column range instead of a flow. So, okay, let's look at a slope graph. So, for a slope graph, I'm going to put maybe female here, male here. Oh, I need to swap these around. I'm going to make it a line and I'm going to put animal onto detail. And now I can see each each animal. Um, oh, I did see somebody do this actually. So I'm going to duplicate this, make this one an area chart. And then put animal up here. Is that right? and then make this a dual axis. Yeah, and let's hide the header. So something like that. Um, but what I would actually want, I think they did it as, I think this one was actually a bar chart that was really thin. I think they did it like that and then colored it by the measure name. Yeah, I think it was something like that. So let me make these a bit wider. Um, I think it was something like that. And then if I sort the animals by, let's say maybe uh, the field descending male. Yeah, so you can see something like that. I would probably swap the male and the female around. So this would be, um, so this is kind of like a combination of a slope slash area chart. I don't remember who created it, but the one that they did was much better, looked much better than this. Okay, so that's a slope chart. Um, Uh, bar chart on map, dumbbell. Okay, you could do a waffle chart, I guess. That would be a lot of waffles, though. Um, okay, so any other, any last ones then to look at? This is probably going to refresh again. Um, so what a radar chart work? It, it, it potentially could, Dan. I'm, I'm not sure. Every time I've tried actually tried to do a radar chart, when we've when I've done one of these uh, wash me visits, it's turned out quite terrible. So let me see here. Um, if I go to my notes, and if I do a radar chart, um, yeah. So what do I need to do here? Okay, so what I'm gonna do here, let's give it a go. We've got a we've got a few minutes. It's only been 45 minutes, so I'm gonna copy the calculations that I mean. So this is what we're gonna try to what we're gonna try to create. So let me let's make the, let's make an attempt at this. So here's the calculations I need. So indicator. So this is going to be min. What is my, okay, so I need to flip back over here because we're not going to have, so the indicator is going to be the animal. Okay. 
So this would be my angle. Okay, so I can get rid of that. Weighted score, so this would be, this is going to be the male. What happened there? I didn't save it. Why is it not letting me save that? What the heck? Why is it not letting me do that? That's really annoying. Okay, so let me just copy all this again. What the hell? So why did it let me do it that time? Oh, whatever. Let's make this one X. Okay, so now if I follow the blog, I believe what I need to do is I want to put X on the columns, Y on the rows. Um, and then I want to put the uh, the field on detail and the angle on detail and change the mark type to line while it's absolutely pouring rain. The angle on line. Okay, let's switch these around. Okay, change it to a polygon. Okay, so right, so let me check this blog post again. So the method, blah blah blah. So we're gonna create this angle cat okay. This this uh, so running, running, this counts the number of distinct sport skills. So that's the dimension, right? So that should be count distinct of animal. Okay, so let's just double check this. This is one that's called angle. This is count distinct of animal. Okay. Um, okay. All right. Okay. All right. Right. This is where the measure you wish to become plots. Okay. So the average of this is what field. This is the distance from center. It's going to be the average of male. Okay. That's fine. Origin in the data point. X axis. Maggie's got the zoomies. Okay. All right. So let me let me start over here. Let me start creating this view again. So I want to put your dimension and angle onto detail. Okay. So angle and our dimension is animal. Set up your running sum. Oh, okay. This is what I didn't do. So compute using animal. Okay. X here. Y here, all right, and I think both of these needed compute using animal, compute using animal, okay, change it to a polygon, and then put angle on path, okay, all right, and then this needs to swap around, okay, that didn't do anything. Okay, so yeah, I mean it, it. It works. I don't know if it's very good. Um, if I put the percentages, let's see. Let me put the male numbers onto. Oh, you can't label them. If I make it a line, so if I make it a line, it's not going to connect all the way. But I can at least put the labels on here to see what it does. Yeah. So what if I sort my animals? 
by the field descending male. Okay, there you go. So that looks a bit better. If I make it a polygon again, it looks like that. So we could probably, let me see if I, if I do this one, but I make this one female. Um, but it's an angle. It's going to be animal. This is going to be distance to center male. Okay, so this one I want to put the female here. Don't really need that angle animal, but that's giving me the same distance from center. Oh, okay, but this X. So let's. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to pile them on top of each other, unfortunately. I don't think so. So let me get rid of that. And if I. I wonder if I put measure names onto color. Yeah, that's not going to work. Okay, so I can do one for male and maybe lay the female one over top of it. But um, yeah, I don't think that's... Uh... Anyway, the radar chart you can build. Um, oops. But I don't think it's probably best practice. It's very hard to understand too, but yes, you, you can do it. Okay, any other visualizations here? So let's get rid of that. I'll put a link to that tutorial as well. So reset the view, yes. Why does, why does Tableau always do this? It's so frustrating. Let me just find it. Um, um, Come on. Okay. This will be an easier way to look at it because I can just look at the images instead since Tablet Public isn't cooperating. Come on. Okay, so deviation. Okay, so we've done the we've done the diverging bar. We've done the spine chart. Diverging stack bar doesn't make sense in this case. Um, scatter plot we've done. The bubble chart doesn't make sense because we don't have anything to size by. I mean, we could size by the total. I get no, that wouldn't really make sense. If I go back to the scatter plot, where's the scatter plot? And if I, um, let's say, I put uh, the total on, let's put the total on size. Yeah, so that's not. Yeah, that doesn't really help me at all. Um, X Y heat maps. So that would be if they were dimensions, but they're not. Um, a dot strip plot won't work because we, well, I mean, if we did like, so this is our radar. If I put, for example, um, maybe female and male on the same axis, let's see, no, let's say I want to make them circles and I want to put the animal onto detail. And maybe if I put measure names onto color, that doesn't even really matter. So if I put measure names onto color, so I can see the two of them together, but that's not really a dot strip plot. So yeah, I wouldn't, I don't think that's really a very good use case for that. Um, you would need to put something like an average line onto each cell, but that doesn't really work either because it's not a, we need, we would need to weight the average uh, because 
there's different there's different number of responses depending on the question. So it wouldn't be um, a good use case to have uh, to just use a, a, a reference line there. Okay. Um, so that would be kind of, I'll just mark it anyway, just so you have it for later. Dot strip plot. Slope we did. We couldn't even just do a regular slope graph, so let me just duplicate this sheet. And I'm going to get rid of the area chart and then make it a line, make it back to a line again. And just reset the size. And then the color. I wouldn't want to have, I'd want to have the uh, variance on the color. Yep. So that would be a more, or actually we would want to put animal on to take that off. This would be a more traditional um, slope graph. But, you know, again, I would, I find this kind of, uh, so fit height, I find this kind of hard to, a bit hard to understand. Um, so, yeah. Um, so that would just be our regular slope graph. Doesn't tell me a whole heck of a lot. All right, what else do we have here? Um, dot plot we did, barcode plot, line slope. Um, okay. Right, so I think we did column bar paired bar paired column the radar chart didn't work and we're not doing anything spatial okay that's it all right so so now we need to figure out which one we want to go with so i think we're all kind of in agreement that the the scatter plot works best so let let me format the view and i'm going to get rid of my row and column dividers um, and I'm going to get rid of all my lines. I'm going to get rid of my zero lines. And uh, so I think that's okay. All right. Is that synchronized? Okay, that's good. And this line. I want to edit this line. I don't want to show the tooltip here. So show tooltip. Okay, there we go. And then maybe I could put a highlighter on or something for for the animal. Um, okay. So let's get rid of the title or get rid of the color legend. And let me start putting this into a dashboard. So let's call this week 20. So let's get rid of the phone layout. <clears throat> um, let's float that in. Let's make it uh, 00, 0 1800. I'm just doing that now so we can get the sizes about right. But what's interesting is my axes aren't the same. Huh. Okay, so edit axis. Let's fix this from zero to how about 0.85. Come on. Okay, and I'm going to do the tick marks every point one. That's good. Hello, Kausalya. I think that's how you pronounce your name. Kausalya. Okay. Um, so, and then let's go here to layout. Let's put maybe about 20 pixels of inner padding. And I want to show my caption. 
Okay, let's make this. Um, let's see. Uh, data source is YouGov. And the created by. Unfortunately, this font is not going to display when we get into Tableau Public. So let me format the workbook again. Um, and let's see, Tableau Public fonts. Okay, Tonoma got such terrible font choices. Super annoying. You finally find a font you like and then it doesn't display. If I just use regular railway, what does that look like? So that's a, I'd say that's a bit better. Oh, come on. Oh boy, I don't know what's going on here. So, Arial. I mean, it's not great. That's okay. I'll just go with Arial. It doesn't bother me. And let me format this axis. And I'm going to make it maybe a light gray. Okay. Um, Okay, um, so now we need to come up with a title. Um, um, so one, two, three, four, five, let's see, let me try this again. Let me just hit okay. How many are there? So there's 15 rows. Yeah, there's no way I can go with Arial. It's just horrendous. Maybe I'll just stick with the boring Tableau fonts. Ah, forget it. I'm going to go back to my railway. It looks so much better. What about Roboto? No. 
Let's go with railway. Okay. I don't know if those are the right words to use. Men are more confident or women are more confident. That's probably okay. Um, okay, so, right, so let's go to scatter plot labels, allow overlap. Okay, now I'm gonna just manually adjust some of these labels like King Cobra. I think I'll put that label over here. Maybe wolf, I'll move to the side. Oh, this is like mind numbingly tedious. I mean, why, why can't I just put this where I want? Oh, so bear and gorilla have, or gorilla and elephant have the same response. A oh, grizzly bear. Yeah, there we go. So the gorilla and elephant have the same numbers. Gorilla. Gorilla and elephant. Six. No, they do. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I know I can put the font. It doesn't display in Tableau Public. I already have the font on my computer. That's why I can display it on here now. Um, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you, Irvin, for responding to that. Yeah, you can just install whatever font you want on your computer. The problem is they don't they don't show up in uh, in Tableau in Tableau Public. Um, okay, so I think, so the last thing is I think maybe I should put, now I'm not really worried about the totals, medium-sized dog. Okay, so let me format the tooltips now. So animal. Okay. Men are much more confident than women of beating an animal in an unarmed fight. Okay, I think um, I think that's okay. Uh, I will call it quits there. Thank you everybody for tuning in again. I hope you found this. I uh, hope you found this useful. And if you did, uh, please you know pass along the word to other people. Maybe they'll be able to learn something from it. And yeah, I hope you have a great day. Bye.